नमस्कार आई कृति वधेरा to students to CIT and CRT's live phone in program and you are watching us live on PME Vidya's channel number 9 this session will be on science and concept of cell division will be discussed today and the expert who has joined us for today's uh, live interaction program i would like to introduce dr priyanka vashne she is assistant professor from lady urban college university of delhi hello we welcome you to PME Vidya dr vashne Thank you, Kriti, ma'am. Thanks a lot, and uh, I am really grateful that you invited me on this forum to interact with the learners. Good afternoon, viewer, uh, viewers. I am Priyanka Vashne, and today I will be discussing about the concept of cell division with you. Right. And uh, yes, as has already mentioned, this is uh, the science textbook in CRT chapter right. five. This is the fundamental unit of life. Right. And before we start with today's live interaction program, viewers. I would like to remind you here that if you have any queries, any questions, any suggestions, then do let us know. Dial on our toll-free numbers. Numbers would be one eight double zero triple one two six five, and the second number is one eight double zero double one two one double nine to watch the live streaming of this program. Kindly log into our official YouTube channel and CRT official, and there also in the live chat box you can send all your suggestions, queries, and questions. Certainly, we will be taking up all of them in the last segment of the program. There is one more medium through which you can contact us. You can mail your questions and suggestions on dth. dot class nine at the rate ciet. dot nic. dot in. So let's begin with today's session on science, where we'll be uh, we will be uh, discussing in detail about the concept of cell division. I welcome you again, Dr. Vashne. So, what our <laughs> learners will be uh, learning today by you? So, uh, ma'am, today I am going to discuss the concept of cell division with the learners. So, uh, when we see uh, the NCERT syllabus, we realize that towards the end of the chapter, there is yeah. a concept of cell division, uh, which is the recent addition, and this is very important conceptually because if we see the chapter, there are two parts in the chapter. First part is related to the structural component of the cells, and the second part is about the cell division. So uh, I'm sure students have seen many sessions uh, from our NCERT only about the structural component, and I have seen that also. They were really interesting and wonderful. So I thought uh, that I should uh, take one step ahead, and I should discuss the concept of cell division, in which I will be talking about primarily the concept of cell division and also how uh, cell reproduction is very important in the survival of so many aspects of human life. so that's that's something i would like to do so uh, with uh, your suggestion and guidance should i start the yeah, discussion yeah yeah please you may <laughs> proceed yeah. yeah thank you so uh, viewers uh, let's start the session yeah as you can see uh, there is an overview of my discussion with you so first of all for the conceptual building we will be talking about the cell as a basic structural and functional unit of life then i'll take on the discussion to nucleus as an important cell organelle with the concept of chromatins chromosomes dna and genes and there on we will be talking about the concept of cell division its relevance and significance why the concept of cell division is so important and why we need to understand that if we really want to enhance our understanding of biology per se and then definitely we will be talking about somatic and reproductive germ cells what are somatic cells what are reproductive and germ cells i will be also be dealing with the concept of haploid and diploid cells or nucleus for that matter and yes after building up the foundations of related concepts we will try to understand the concept of cell division mitosis and meiosis so this is the overview of my discussion and i would request uh, the uh, learners to be focused so that they can understand the interrelationship between various sub concepts so let's move ahead we really need to understand learners what is the meaning of cell so we know that cell is the basic fundamental unit of life every body every living organism is made up of cell and cell has specific structural component so be it plants be it animals be it uh, monera group be it bacteria be it uh, other living organisms we see that there is basic structure this is cell and it may be unicellular or multicellular so organisms may be unicellular in nature means they are made up of one cell or they may be multicellular means they are made up of various cells and of course when uh, organisms are multicellular different uh, cells the group of cells have taken different uh, functions so there is a division of labor so uh, we really need to understand in case of uh, unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms how their functioning the structural aspects and the functional aspects are taking place so uh, we will be talking about that before uh, moving ahead we uh, will just uh, be recalling 
the discussion which is there in the previous parts of the chapter as well as the interactive session you have seen that if we see any cell be it plant cell or be it animal cell there are certain cell organelles which are there these are nucleus cell membranes cytoplasm endoplasmic reticulum golgi body ribosomes chloroplast in case of plant cell lysosomes vacuole and yes all of us should know the cell wall is present in plants but it is absent in the animal cells so of course we have to need to understand what is the nucleus aspect because nucleus is the central uh, i would say the organelle which is of very very uh, much importance in the cell and uh, if we compare the prokaryotic cell which is found mainly in the uh, monera group of uh, kingdom and if we see the eukaryotic cell it is present in the higher organisms uh, onwards from uh, let's say protista animal kingdom and plant kingdom so uh, there is a lot of diversity in the structure of cell with regard to uh, its cell organelles with regard to having the cell wall or not having the cell wall so this is the foundation thing that we need to understand as the learner so uh, with this uh, diagram i would like to first make you understand that when we are talking about the cell when we are talking about the nucleus there are so many terms that we keep hearing in our daily life you know like uh, dna genes chromosome chromatin nucleus so many times it so happens that we uh, find it difficult to have uh, an understanding of interrelationship between the two so let's start understanding this so when we see any cell there is a central part this is nucleus inside the nucleus there are thread like structures so when we see this diagram there are we can see cell is there inside that nucleus is very very visible and along with that when when we go deeper into the nucleus there are thread like structures so there are two forms if the threads are scattered you know they are not in any compact form they are not very clearly visible then this thread like form is known as chromatin and when these chromatin fibers chromatin threads they start condensing you know like the spring when they start condensing they take a very very visible form that is known as chromosome so chromosomes are nothing but the condensed form of the chromatin fibers which are present in the nucleus so if a cell is not dividing if a cell is not going into the cell uh, division or cell reproduction for that matter then this material is there inside the nucleus in the thread form which is known as chromatin when it is about to go for cell division about which we will be just discussing after some time then they start condensing and they come into the form of chromosome so this is the relationship between chromatin fibers and chromosome now let's go further when we see this diagram we would realize that when you see the chromosome if chromosome is extended which i just said chromatin then it ultimately gets reduced to the dna so dna is there long threads and stretches of dna are forming chromatin fibers and then these chromatins if they are condensed they are forming the chromosome so this is one thing apart from that many times we hear the uh, term genes okay and we are really wondering that what is the relationship between the genes and dna because many times we know that there is certainly a relationship but we are not clear so i would like to uh, clarify that here that these are the functional units of dna dna is a long thread these are the functional units functional stretches of dna which are forming certain type of proteins so these are activated parts which are forming certain proteins and these proteins are very useful for various functionings of our body so this was the relationship between the cell nucleus chromatin fibers chromosome dna and the genes let's move further this can be seen with the help of this diagram also more clearly that how chromosomes are forming the dna let's move further we first of all need to understand after this basic understanding of cell nucleus and other parts that what is the idea of cell division one thing and what is the relevance and significance of cell division so learners we really need to understand that uh, let's say let's take an example of human body human body is made up of various cells same is the case for many multicellular multicellular organisms are made up of cells unicellular are made up of one cell so if we want to survive which is the basic foundation of sustenance of life on this earth if the life has to sustain if life has to pass from one generation to the other generation then we need to have production of one cell from the other cell 
because with the wear and tear with the damage of the cell one day cell will not survive then if the cell is not able to produce the other cell then we will not be able to sustain life on this earth so cell division is the very foundation of the sustenance of life and apart from that there are various functions of cell division so primarily in cell division one cell is forming two cells or four cells at the later stages and thus it is contributing in the production of cells which is useful for the growth and development even in case of human beings we see that the life starts from one cell that is single cell zygote it divides repeatedly and it forms embryo then embryo forms specialized tissues then organs are formed and then we see the newborn baby is born newborn baby is there infant is there so this is the result of cell division only even in our body like skin cells bone marrow cells these cells also keep dividing so it is very important to understand that how cell division is contributing into the different facets of our growth and development repairing wear and tear and yes uh, in terms of cell division we can also say that it is helping in the reproduction forming the germ cells so uh, when we move ahead we see there is a diversity of function of cell division this is the relevance and significance and it can be seen in the asexual reproduction as well as the sexual reproduction like uh, we in our previous classes uh, we have uh, studied that in plants asexual reproduction also takes place and in asexual reproduction there is a kind of cell division which is known as mitosis is happening while in case of uh, higher uh, animal kingdom higher organisms like uh, human beings we uh, reproduce by forming the germ cells reproductive cells in case of male this is sperm in case of female this is ova and there is a different kind of cell division which is taking place which is known as meiosis so in cell division there are two three types of cell divisions which are primarily uh, in conversation and they exist like amitosis fission and then fusion and then uh, we talk about uh, cell division like you know uh, mitosis meiosis so here uh, i would like to share uh, the concept of amitosis mitosis and meiosis mitosis meiosis will be primarily discussed with you let's move ahead so uh, when we talk about the nucleus and cell division we all of us know i'll be taking the reference of human beings uh, human beings hum every cell in human beings every diploid cell i want to say which is having a set of chromosomes has 46 chromosomes in this visual we can see how these 46 chromosomes are there and they are paired so one chromosome is paired with other there are total 23 pairs and one pair is actually having homologous chromosomes so chromosomes which are forming a pair are known as homologous chromosomes in case of human beings there are 23 pairs of chromosomes and the last pair which is a 23rd pair is uh, different in case of male and female in case of male this is xy in case of female this is xx and we can see that how this is playing the role in uh, uh, terms of reproduction because uh, when we talk about reproduction in human beings sex determination is primarily dependent on whether the y chromosome is coming from father or x chromosome because we know the 23rd chromosome in mother is xx so mother is producing x chromosome only during the process of cell division and forming the ova but father is producing two types of sperms one sperm is uh, having x chromosome while the other sperm is having y chromosome and it is purely a chance factor whether the x or the y chromosome uh, will go at the time of fertilization and formation of zygote so we see that if xx is there uh, we have girl girl child and if x by y is there then we have boy child so this is the example of cell division only because uh, the sperms and ovas are formed by the cell division which is known as meiosis and here i can show you you can see the visual that 46 chromosomes are there let's say for in mother 46 chromosomes are there in father at the time of cell division like meiosis in female uh, female gamete is formed which is known as egg and it is carrying 23 chromosomes and these 23 chromosomes are there in the egg and waiting for the 23 other chromosomes to come from the sperm and 23 23 they form together thus the new one is having 46 chromosome so meiosis uh, is helping in the conservation of chromosomes also because if the number of chromosome will not uh, be half in case of ova and sperm then it will keep doubling itself 
which will not be contributing anyhow in the sustenance. So every human being is having 46 chromosome. So in order to have 46 chromosome, first the 46 chromosomes in mother as well as in father have to be reduced to be 23 and then they again join together to form the 46 chromosomes. That is how the life starts. When we talk about cell division, there are two, three terms which are very important students, uh, haploid uh, chromosomes and diploid chromosomes. You will be hearing these uh, terms often. Let me clarify what are this. As we just mentioned that 46 chromosomes are there in human being and we call it 23 pairs. So one set is actually the 23 pairs. If one set is counted, this is known as haploid. So if any cell is having only the 23 chromosomes, which is one set, it will be known as haploid cell. But if a cell is having 46 chromosome means 23 pairs of chromosomes, it is having two sets. So this is diploid. One set of 23 chromosome is haploid, two sets of 23 chromosomes is diploid. So we have cells which are diploid, we have the cells which are haploid. And sex cells in human beings which are sperm and ova, they are haploid in nature. We just discussed that the 46 chromosomes are reducing to 23 chromosomes. The number of chromosome is getting exactly half. So these are the haploid cells. And when these haploid cells come together during fertilization, they become again the diploid cells. So this is, this is the idea of having the haploid cell and diploid cell in our body. So now this was very important to build up the foundation of related concepts because what happens when we start studying the concept of cell division or cell multiplication for that matter, these are related terms. What are the somatic cells? What are the germ cells? What is a diploid cell? What is a haploid cell? What is the idea and relationship between the gene, chromosome, chromatin and DNA? Now we have understood from where these terms are coming and how they are related. Now in the light of that knowledge, let us try to understand the idea of cell division. So as I have just mentioned learners, these are primarily of two types, mitosis and meiosis. Let us try to understand mitosis. First of all students, this is very important to understand that every cell in our body is having a cycle, it is following a cycle, means there are consecutive events in sequence, they have to happen and they are cyclic events. So when you try to understand these cyclic events, then we understand that how at a certain part of the cycle cell is dividing. In case of human being, it has been seen that in mitosis a cell divides in 24 hours. So one cycle of mitosis is taking 24 hours and this is very interesting by the way to know that actually mitosis is taking place in one hour only. 23 hours out of 24 hours is the preparation. So actual job of cell division, division of DNA material, chromosome into half or for that matter in mitosis the same is happening in one hour and 23 hours for the preparation time. If you uh, think about bacteria, it duplicates itself in 20 minutes. So, so there is a variation. Now everything is happening in cyclic form. If you see the cycle, it is made up of interface and actual mitotic phase. Interphase is actually the preparation time because here all the preparations with regard to duplication of DNA, formation of RNA and protein synthesis is taking place. And if we see the interphase, it has actually three parts, G1 phase, then DNA replication and G2 phase. So briefly if we see G1 phase is the preparation phase where the uh, RNA is being formed, proteins are formed and other required biomolecules are formed. When everything is ready, everything is there, then DNA replication takes place. DNA replication means in simple terms we can understand DNA is duplicating itself, DNA is forming exactly the same copy. So if one thread of chromatin is there, it will be forming the exactly same thread of chromatin. So they will be 100% same. DNA duplication is taking place. After that for the preparation of mitosis because you know now the DNA has doubled itself now the chromosomes have doubled themselves and they have to again divide to make the number of chromosomes same in the daughter cells. So now other molecules are required like you know more RNA more other uh, biomolecules are required which is happening in the G2 phase. So G1 phase preparation actual DNA replication then preparation and then 
after this interface the cycle is moving towards a mitosis phase so uh, students uh, i can make you understand this uh, concept of mitosis with a very uh, simple uh, lay person's uh, example like you know if uh, a mother is having uh, 1 lakh rupees and she has two daughters she wants to give 1 lakh each to her daughters now she has just 1 lakh rupees and she wants to give 1 lakh each to her daughter how is it possible it's not possible but the way is that first she doubles that amount she makes 1 lakh into 2 lakh by different means by doing the business or you know making fd or whatever means is there first she make 2 lakhs from that 1 lakh and then she out of those 2 lakhs give 1 lakh to one daughter and the another 1 lakh to another daughter that way she can ensure that whatever money she is having she is equally distributing the same money to both the daughters so this is the foundation of mitosis in mitosis a cell has to produce two cells with the same amount 100% similarity of dna so we have seen in the interface dna replication the dna has duplicated itself same 1 lakh to 2 lakh analogy and now it has to again divide into two parts so after g2 phase the cell is entering into mitotic phase right let's uh, try to dr washney we just have uh, a minute left for this session so i'll wind ended. up the mitosis yeah. i'll yeah. wind up the mitosis thank you so uh, here we can see how the dna is duplicating and how the homologous chromosomes are coming together let's see the mitosis so in mitosis uh, the chromosomes are there and we have seen during the dna duplication phase they have duplicated themselves so we can see in each uh, chromosome two chromatids are there two parts are there these are nothing but the duplicated copies they have not been simply separated but they are together the dna amount is double so let's say uh, if this is the human cell and mitosis is taking place then all the 46 chromosomes will arrange themselves in the center of the cell and this phase is known as metaphase these 46 chromosomes with double amount of dna will arrange themselves into the center and after that during the ana phase these chromatids of individual chromosome will get separated they will move towards the poles so the amount which had been uh, duplicated now it is going to be divided and moving towards the opposite direction and in the telo phase then they will be towards the opposite ends and then nuclear membrane will be formed and then cell membrane will be again constricted and two cells will be formed so in the mitosis four phases are there prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase and all these phases are actually helping in the creation of two daughter cells which are the result of the division of one single mother cell right dr washi so, i i guess we can uh, further discuss about the uh, in the more detail concept of the cell division in further sessions yes ma'am yes ma'am because it takes maybe. time yes ma'am i i can uh -huh. totally understand and it was really wonderful to have you dr washne for this particular session thanks for joining pme with there today thank you thank you and the viewers remain connected uh, because in next session we will be discussing a poem in english for you for ninth standard students itself so remain connected to pme with there we are coming back just in a short while thank you